Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDockBuilder.com here with the September 6th spoilers. Oh, and man, we have some good ones. So this is probably going to be another long video. I know some of you don't like the long videos, but other of you appreciate them. And I'm going to try to go in detail for all the cards spoiled, where they might fall into standard and, and give you a heads up of, of maybe investments for possible decks or at least at least possible brews because we are a rogue deck brewer i'm going to try to get back to that whole feel of the channel i know a lot of you complain about not enough gameplay on the channel i usually do a series over at gatheringmagic.com and then save some gameplay for the twitch uh stream as well again i'm going to try to get back into that i think i think i've covered most of the eldritch moon uh cards i was uh wanting to brew around pretty well in the said formats or or uh either through Gathering Magic or Twitch. Anyway, let's get into the spoilers. So first of all, Nissa Vital Force. This card is absolutely insane. This feels like a better version of Koth of the Hammer from good old Scars of Mirrodin. The ults are actually very similar in power level. I think if you ult off Nissa, uh, that's going to be... It's, it's, it's better, just plain better than the... Uh, what's the card? The trackers, uh, the tireless tracker. If you can get the ult off, because you can just start drawing a card for every land. It means every land draw off the top of your deck is not a dead card uh, late game. So it is five uh, for a five loyalty planeswalker. So I think it's right on par, and it does actually protect itself in two different ways, which is vital, pun intended, for a Planeswalker to do. So first of all is untap a land you control until, you, until your next turn it becomes a 5-5 five, five elemental creature with haste. It is still a land, so that means you can have a 5-5 five, five back to play blocking duty, or this is again another 5 drop with haste in actually in green. That's pretty good. That is actually pretty good. It's exactly what green, green mid-range wants as kind of a curve topper. So you can start with a very aggressive kind of Sylvan Advocate and a Tireless Tracker into, uh, what's a good 4-drop? Xerox out of the format, but I'm sure there's a good 4-drop um, out of green and then into the 5-drop of Nyssa. And then, I mean, that's a lovely curve. They've had to kill the Sylvan Advocate or the Tireless Tracker before they get out of control. And then this can help just win you the game. Uh, then, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand, so that can actually sort of protect Nissa later on by re returning a... I guess it's a permanent. I was thinking you could get anything back, but permanent's pretty, still pretty sweet. Uh, as any creature that's been killed, say those Sylvan Advocates late game, then, can then come back uh, to play blocking duty. Or, if anything has gone uh, to the graveyard via any other board wipe, this can get you back in. I'm actually not thinking the negative 3 is going to be that relevant, because I think you're going to want to untap uh, land, and then probably untap another land, and then negative 6 as quickly as possible to get the ult. So I think this is a, a great support card, a great aggressive card, and, I mean, it's got the almost an eternal witness type ability it's got the tireless tracker ability it's got that old cough of the hammer ability so thumbs up for this card uh, especially the five drops can be ramped into quite easily with uh there are plenty of i'm um, well actually the two the three mana spell is getting rotated the ramp spell but i'm sure there might that there might be another ramp spell in green that can cheat out a, a, a turn early and get a land into play all right, on to the Torrential Gearhulk. Six mana for a 5-6 flash. When it enters the battlefield, you may cast target insert sorcery card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that card would be in your put in your graveyard this turn, exile instead. So it's Snapcaster Mage with an insane body. Wow, this is actually just an upgraded version of the um, Goblin Dark Dwellers, too. This card's really, really powerful. Six mana for a 5-6 flash. So what's really cool about it is you can flash it in, kill a creature if they attack into it, and then still be able to use a instant card. It can't be a sorcery, so it's not quite like Snapcaster as far as casting sorcery spells, but instant is pretty relevant in a format that has, like, murder, even. So a lot of the red is suffering from being uh, sorcery speed right now, but splashing the, or splashing this in another color, uh, well, blue still has a ton of instances, but white probably, I'm thinking, like, uh, the, the command, the Oach size command would have been something pretty sweet. Of course, that's rotating, but I'm sure that we'll have many different little avenues to run with this torrential gear hulk. So insane body on this, and yeah, really, really good mythic, solid mythic. I think this will absolutely see play in like a white blue control or a black blue control shell. Might even see play in any other type of of, of even mono blue artifact uh, if that's a thing. 
again, just a, you can this this is so versatile. It can be a tempo card. Can be a is there's some pretty powerful instances with high mana costs. Um, most to take an extra turn are going to be sorceries, so it's not going to be able to do that. I mean, if you have a self mill type strategy to try to hit a huge instant, I'm sure there are some in the format though. If we just put, if I, I were to uh, pull up MTGO and look at all the converted mana cost, in either blue or red or white or black for instances, I'm sure we can find some some uh, heavy hitters. All right, onto the modules. These are all pretty cool uh, designs. The animation modules, the one I'm most excited about, because whenever one or more plus one wizard counters are placed on a permanent you control, you may pay one if you do create a one one color servo artifact creature token. There's got to be something in the realm of the magic, the gathering world, where this creates like a loop. Uh, of course, you do have to pay one, but whenever you create a a, a one one counter. There was a, no, Bolster only happened with a non-token off of Anafenza, but there might be something that triggers off a plus one Bolster counter to then to be put on something and then pay one and just rinse and repeat for as much mana as you have. Maybe in this format we can find something about it. But it has proliferate. Choose a counter on target permanent or player, give that permanent or player another counter. So not quite proliferate, but kind of cool uh, with adding another counter. Remember, Planeswalker token or Planeswalkers have uh, counters. So is pointed, uh, Poison is considered a counter. The new um, Aether is, I believe, considered a counter. Yes, energy counters. Yes, so it is a counter, so you can just keep adding because uh, it is player that controls the energy counter, uh, player that controls the uh, poison counter. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of, essentially, this is just a one drop with such a great ability. I think this is pretty sweet. This would have been way better with Hangerback Walker in the format. Hopefully, we do get a surprise Hangerback Walker reprint. I just love the card, and I think it's it's kept in check with all the exile spells in the format, especially like Declaration in Stone. Uh, decoction module. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you get an energy counter. So here's another one of those. We have the, the white creature that does this, and I think this one's a little bit easier because it's just two mana, uh, generic mana, and then you can start getting the energy counters. And then for four, you can return to our creature your control with just owner's hand. So I'm thinking like Reflector Mage type cards. You can get more value out of them, even uh, Spell Quellers, things like that. Uh, by returning it. The four and tap is a little bit of a high activation, but I think just the ability for creatures to start adding to those energy counters is going to be very relevant with this card. Again, we're going to have to see how playable the energy counter uh, strategy is going to be. So far, we've seen some really, really powerful energy uh, strategies. Fabrication module. Whenever you get one or more uh, energy counters, you put a plus one counter on target creature control. So there's a nice little loop here. Uh, all three of them, of course, work together. Uh, whenever a creature enters, you get a, a energy. When it, whenever you get one more energy, put a plus one on counter. Then you can pay one to put out a one one colorless, which then triggers this off, which triggers this off, which triggers trigger 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 trigger. Uh, and just basically for every one mana, you'd get an extra energy and a one one counter. Of course, you'd have to assemble the modules, this kind of combo. So I'm not quite sure how well this whole. Um, set is going to work together. It seems like a lot of pieces. But what I do like about these is they all seem to be pretty good independent of one another. Um, and yeah, so they could go in a deck. It's just going to be quite awkward in a format that runs out Sylvan Advocates and Tireless Trackers to be wasting a turn putting out an artifact that just sort of starts to get you ahead. So I'm sure in a sealed format, if you get all three though, you're going to ha have a lot of fun with this uh, sort of combo. All right, my, one of my first little exciting cards, uh, Madcap Experiment, which is kind of another card like Ad Nauseam, uh, like with combos. So what I've been looking at Madcap Experiment is, is probably going to be Blightsteel Colossus is the best one I can think of cheating into play. Um, Blightsteel Colossus has lost favor in reanimation because there's just Emrakul and um, the Gorio, or Gorio's Vengeance hit Legendary, so Blightsteel Colossus isn't a Legendary like Brigamos or um, Gristlebrand. But old school reanimation used to try to cheat out the uh, Blightsteel Colossus, and there used to be different ways to do that with the the artifact polymorph type card, and you only run the Blightsteel Colossus in your deck, um, and then just things that create tokens of artifacts to sacrifice to go get it. Uh, yeah, it's it's been another. I know there has been other type of cards that do similar to Madcap Experiment, but red is kind of a cool little ability because this is the also the color that's easy to give things haste. So Thopter Engineer can give the Blightsteel Colossus hate. Thopter Engineer has rotated from standard, but in, mo in modern it still seems to be a pretty decent card. A 1-3 body gives artifact creatures haste, 
and then puts out a 1-1 uh, Thopter. And then if you only are running Blightsteel Colossus in your deck, or even like Worm Coil Engine, and then say other ways to give it haste, there is a one mana spell called Burst of Speed. There's cards like Mass Hysteria. There's there's an Enchant Fervor type enchantments that give all of your, your cards haste. And even like maybe a Cryptolite Shell or even a Storm type shell, you can storm up uh, to find enough... Um, Spells in the graveyard to both get a haste effect and the madcap experiment and then uh, just find the blight steel and then attack in for lethal. So I don't think it's going to be like anywhere near a tier one. There's just better combo decks like Scape Shift that I think are a lot more easy just to assemble that sort of combo. Uh, but madcap experiments can add another little combo flair uh, to modern that I'm, I'm sure someone's going to try to break. I, if it's instant speed, of course, it would be a lot better because it's instant speed into blight, skill, blight Steel. But it does have the effect of dealing damage for each card that you uh, reveal that is that you don't put into play. So that's kind of keeping it in check as well. But we've seen ways just to, uh, like Angel's Grace, just to basically uh, save yourself from losing the game via damage for a turn. Now we have the Lathnu Hellion. I love this card in a red aggro. Not a big fan of the the kind of red deck wins type strategies, but I think they need it. Right now, the only uh, decks that Red Seas play are really just the, the Fevered version and a few like heavy, heavy control lists that are running Nahiri and Chandra from Standard. And those have kind of really fallen out of favor as well. Uh, we also see like a Naya Planeswalker type deck uh, that sees play every now and again. But I think this is going to make the the kind of the, the red deck wins creature strategy actually viable as it curves out at four is usually we're on a curve, so three mana for four damage. And actually you gotta think this guy is probably gonna get an eight for eight damage as it is going to be able to tack on in the turn it comes out and then you can pay the two energy just because it adds that two energy. Also, this is another little ramp for energy if you're just trying to get an energy and do some damage. So we've already talked about the, the mirror works card that wants to get up to six and this isn't a terrible target to even hit with the mirror works because it will at least uh generate back some mana for another activation the, the following turn or again this card is just great by itself because it's a four four with two attacks and if you have any other way to generate energy beyond that it can actually get three attacks four attacks whatever so i think this is a great addition to those type of strategies and most likely we'll see play. Even if it was just a 4-4 haste or died at the end of turn, those type of cards have traditionally seen play in, in standard formats. Now we have the Planeswalker deck cards. These are the dumbed down version of cards that Planeswalkers that will exist in the format. And apparently there's going to be five of them. So I don't know how many are actually going to be in the set and how many are just going to be in the Planeswalker decks. Uh, we do know that Chandra and Nissa now have versions, uh, better versions. But these will come in those Planeswalker decks, and I actually think these are playable. I really do. So Chandra is weaker. Six mana for a five loyalty. Gets uh, to deal two damage to each opponent for plus two. Uh, four damage to start creatures, so she can protect herself and start pumping up damage. It's not terrible. I guess six mana, you'd want to do more. And then in negative ten, it deals six damage to target player and each creature is your control. It's called one side side board wipe. That's pretty powerful. It takes a more than a few turns to get up to that, though. It takes seven, nine, eleven than ult and she's still alive after she ults so perfect for like these introductory decks to learn how to use planeswalkers but probably not good enough to go in in standard nissa nature's artisan kind of falls in that same category six mana for five yeah plus three though you gain three life so it goes eight eleven and then fourteen then you can ult but the ult will basically be lethal creatures you control get plus five plus five and gain trample until the turn you can almost doubling season these in modern, but <laughs> not quite. They'll, they'll go up to 10 and then uh, can't quite ult it. But you can, Chandra you can. So doubling season into Chandra seems pretty funny. And remember, we still have the um, deploy the gatewatch that can cheat these in, but they still seem pretty weak for, of course, their mana cost. And they, they specifically did that because they did not want to see these cards outside of the Planeswalker decks that they are actually coming in. So again, great introductories. For the Planeswalkers, Nissa also can reveal the top two cards of your library and put all lands in the battlefield in the rest in her hand. So she has a draw two card ability for negative four, which is kind of cool. You'd have to figure out a way to protect it. If one of them does seem to slip into standard play, it'll definitely be the Nissa over the Chandra, in my opinion. Because the draw two cards is kind of cool off six, and then you can keep her alive. You'd have to plus her twice, though, to use it again. Yeah, I don't. it's probably just too weak. Speaking of, though, a Planeswalker that is not too weak that has been hyped up, uh, currently selling for like 50 bucks, 
uh, pre-selling, which is absolutely ridiculous in a first set. Absolutely avoid this. This set can be opened a lot. It's can be drafted twice, uh, once as a three of, and then again as a one of. Uh, Shanda Torch of Defiance, four mana for a four, four loyalty planeswalker that has the ability to exile the top card of your library, and you may cast that card. If you don't, it Defiance deals two damage to each opponent. So casting it means you still have to pay its mana cost. Um, I'll, I'll talk about this in a second, why I think that this card's actually inferior to the Chandra that existed back in M15 and that we currently use in the Scred Red build. But it does have some interesting little modes, so it'll be some playtesting uh, really to see if this is playable or not. Uh, a secondary ability is to add two red to your mana pool. That's kind of cool because you can go four into a seven. So if there's a decent seven drop in the format that you want to get out, I'm not quite thinking of one right now, except that this, everyone's already been talking how Chandra actually works pretty well in Deploy the Gatewatch because then uh, turn four Chandra, possibly even turn three off of like either some sort of mana ramp and then and then a turn four or turn five into Deploy the Gatewatch. So, and then find some other friends to help out Chandra. But, I mean, adding two mana is just a nice... Uh, she gets an extra ability. So, that's just a plus, a complete plus to the most Planeswalkers that only have three abilities. Uh, her negative three does four damage to our creature, which means she protects herself. That's four damage, though, so it misses Reality Smasher. It misses um, Sylvan Advocate. It misses a few cards. It does kill uh, Kalidas, which is really, really good. What I mean by misses Sylvan Advocate, it misses Sylvan Advocate on the when it has another land out, which is going to be very relevant because five, this is going to come out, I guess, on turn four, though. You get Chandra, you can kill a Sylvan Advocate. But later on, it's not going to be able to kill four or five Sylvan Advocates. There are other, there's a few other five toughness creatures that Chandra's just not going to be able to ping down. Um, I can't think of any at the moment, but uh, she does protect herself. But the problem with that is she can only do it one time before then having to plus up a, a, a more than a few times to do it again. So it goes down to one, then it goes up to two, goes up to three, and then you can do it again um, if... Yeah, I, I really do not... I disagree with a lot of the hype right now. Not nearly as good as everyone thinks Chandra is. I actually think Nahiri is more powerful. A lot of people are trying to compare the two because they're similar uh, casting costs. I think a better comparison is the old school Chandra with the plus one deals a damage to a player and a creature they control. And the plus zero is XL, a top card of your library, and you may play that card. So that's a huge difference between the two. Uh, you're going to miss one third of the time with Chandra Torch of Defiance because of lands. And then you're also, you still have to pay the mana cost for it. So it's kind of awkward the turns that come, comes out. You just do two damage to an opponent. Is that better than one damage or two damage split between a creature and a player? Even today, I was able to kill a Vault Scourge off a of Chandra, the old school Chandra, and get some value out of it. Uh, also was able to kill off a young Pyromancer and then make Lingering Souls attack into her uh, because she can uh, take care of those uh, one toughness creatures. This one cannot. It's just two damage to an opponent. This wants to be in like a uh, Fever Vision type deck, but I'm not quite sure that it has that much of a, a, a it's even competing for the Collective uh, Defiance, which I think is 4 damage and 3 damage split right off the bat. You're going to get much more value out of this Chandra before it's taken care of. I don't know. But the negative 7, which is pretty good if you do plus her, and then plus her, and then plus her, and then ult, whenever... A, you cast a spell, it deals 5 damage to our creature player. That is on par to like a Koth ult. So I'm thinking this card will probably want to... It's going to be at least tested in Scred Red and a few other decks. Like Jun might test it. But I'm still under the the impression that this card is is absolutely not as good as everyone's hyping it up to be. And we'll have wait to, I've said that about Liliana and was dead wrong about Liliana. Uh, because of how well Liliana protected herself against spirits and humans. Chandra does a terrible job protecting yourself against uh, spirits and humans as you can only kill one of them and then she'll die to any one one in the format. So keep that in mind. I don't. I really don't think Standard is nearly as powerful as something like Liliana or even Nahiri. The Metallurgic summon, Summonings. Man, that really looks like a sliver to me. Uh, the Metallurgic Summonings, 5 mana. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, create an XX Colors Contract Artifact Creature Token where X is that spell's converted mana cost. It's pretty sweet. Cre creates that artifact token, artifacts, and then trigger off other things. Uh, we there was a card that I saw that whenever an artifact did something, and we talk, people were talking about clue tokens, uh, working with it. Anyway, we'll get to that later on. Five mana, exile it, and return all instant sorcery cards from your grave at your hand. Activate this ability only if you control six or more artifacts. 
that is a pretty sweet card. You're getting double amount of spells. You're getting a lot of... It kind of is still the the uh, the big big uh, Delver of Secrets. What do they call that? Do the the, the Docent of Perfection? That Very similar to that card, as that is going to create like 1-1 one, one Wizards. I, I like this in the Control Shell too, because you can drop this on turn 5, and this can just be your win con. It feels very much similar to the... I know that they don't have that similar abilities, but the um, assemble the the legion, assemble the legion feels very much similar to that. You you slap this metallurgic summonings down, and then you just start casting in some sorcery spells to kind of get those um, creatures. Most of them are going to be in a blue deck that wants it, like like anticipates and possibly like bounce spells, counter spells. They're going to be two and three power and toughness creatures. Not really anything spectacular, but if you do cast like a part the water veil, that's pretty huge. Uh, because it's 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 like the without the awaken you're already getting the awaken almost with this token and then even imagine with an awaken this can easily be a win con so I think that the 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 mono blue not mono blue do nothing decks will absolutely want the metallurgic summonings they lose some pretty key cards though in rotation um, also which makes this card a lot better is Dramoka's command is out of the format so enchantments just got an insane so much better because you just against like both green white tokens and bant spirits bant company uh bant humans all of, of even green white humans even just white green ramp decks every now and again would just have uh the main uh board of the dramoka's command and your chamas would just suffer from that so i think it gets a lot better now with this uh with it out of the format very playable the Bizarre Barge. When a Beaumont Bizarre Barge enters the battlefield, draw a card. This is a nice little cantrip for four. Crew three, that means you have to use uh, power three uh, creatures equaling a power three or greater to crew it. And it's a five five. Nice draft card. I don't think it's standard playable. Wisweaver Angel. This is another little rant card that I want to have because I thought Wizards was smart enough to fix these. So why they put Restoration Angel as non-angel and some of the other cards as non whatever their specific uh, type is is so you couldn't do these infinite flickers. So if you have basically Whisper Weave Angel and another Whisper Weave Angel, you can infinite exile them because when it enters the battlefield, you may exile another target creature, then return to the battlefield. So then you can exile uh, the other copy and return it. So if you have anything like Impact Tremors or now we've seen some cards in the format that when you generate an energy whenever it comes into play, uh, and it, you can generate clue tokens, you can generate, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of other things that I'm even missing, like in standard, to kind of go infinite with that. You can basically, yeah, that's just two cards to go infinite, and it gets a lot of, it's the, the fixed restoration, you know, it doesn't have flash, um, is two mana more, so keep that in mind, but in a slower type format where you can assemble that sort of, um, flicker, flicker, flicker ability, and where we've already stated some of these cards earlier are just good by themselves. They don't really need to be abused. I think that, that having two Whisper Weave infinite for something is going to see someone somewhere is going to play a deck like that. And you're going to lose to that. And it's just very annoying that Wizards didn't have the foresight to fix that. Should have said non-angel. Exile another non-angel and it would have fixed the, the whole infinite loop. Impact Tournaments is going out of the format. But again, there's got to be something out there that, that will break it. Harness Lightning, two mana, choose target creature, you get three uh, energy. Um, pay any amount of energy, Harness Lightning deals that much damage to that creature. So you choose a creature, get three energy, so it can ramp you into energy, and then you can spend as much energy as you want. So you gotta think this is a two mana spell that can do three damage to a creature. So it's a nice little replacement for the um, one drop, the uh, impulse, fire impulse. So I think on that... Just on that fact, it's going to see play. Plus, you have some other energy left over. Uh, you can use it towards other things. So if you only need to do one damage, you have two energy left over. Plus, if you have other energy elsewhere, you can kill... Like, you have another energy, you can kill a, a Kalidus. You can kill other things, too. Uh, Harness Lightning is another way that's just going to kill Gisela. So it's going to keep Gisela, I think... Or Gisela from actually seeing much standard play. Long Tusk Cub. Two mana. Whenever it deals combat damage to the player, you get two energy, and then you can pay two energy plus one plus one counter. So that's pretty sweet because you got to think of this. This is just a plus that you don't have to spend energy. But every time this has that what slith, slith type ability for two mana, it's not bad. A bear, a two two bear in limited. This is going to be really really good, especially if you pair it with black or red to keep the board clear. Even blue by bouncing cards, and it's going to be a three three, a four four, a five five. 
Plus, you have that awesome ability to just generate the, the mana somewhere else or the energy somewhere else. Awesome, awesome card. I'm really loving these uncommons. This set is so cool. I absolutely love it. I don't know if it's going to be my favorite set in a while because most of these sets they printed since Fate Reforged. So I didn't like cons, and I wasn't too hot on Battle for Zendikar, but I think all of the other sets have been pretty sweet within that, in that like, cons onwards. Theros was kind of a meh set, that whole block. Return to Ravnica, I wasn't very impressed with either, that whole block. But since then, I think we've been spoiled with really, really creative blocks, and this is turning out to being a really cool. And you can just see in the uncommons and commons how, how nice the design is, how many interactions, and it's going to really uh, benefit the, 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 the brewers and the creative players, especially in the limited type format. So Voltaic Brawler. Voltaic Brawler enters the battlefield and you get two energy counters. So it's Burning Tremissary. Whenever Brawler attacks, you may pay an energy. If you do, it gets plus one plus one against Trample and it turns. You can only do that once uh, per attack. It triggers off once. But again, this is a way that it, it, it dishes off energy counters. Uh, uh, so you can attack twice for 4-3. It's a Trample. Two mana for a 3-2. It's a warrior, which was relevant, so not relevant anymore with some of the warrior tribals uh, basically rotating out of the format. But, I mean, it's, it's green-red aggro could be a thing, and this is, is definitely a very valuable card in that kind of slot. Yeah, it's, it's a 4-3 for two attacks. I, I really like this card. Or, it's a 3-2 that then gives you two more energy for the Hellion. Yeah. This is going to be a sweet little card. I think there will be a green-red aggro type strategy. But aggro will get stomped by this Arbor Back Stomper. Here is the Fixed Thragtus. We have the Fixed Restoration Angel. Now we have the Fixed Thragtus. 5-4 Trample enters the battlefield, gain 5 life. So it does have one more toughness and Trample. And the mana cost is a little bit harder to splash in any other color than Thragtus. And you don't get a 3-3 three, three, uh, beast left behind. So yes, it is weaker than Thractus, but don't underestimate this card. Siege Rhino saw play, Thractus saw play. We've seen cards. Obstinate Baylos saw play. This card will definitely see play. It is exactly where you need it to be on turn number 5. Uh, it works pretty well with Elders Evolution, too. You can Elders Evolution the, the Druid into, not the Druid, it'd have to be 3 mana. So you'd have to, like, Mattery Shaper into Arbok Stomper. You've really stabilized at that point. There is also the uh, guy that comes into play and you get to look at the top four cards of your library and then that's a perfect, and put a creature in your hand and then it'll just evolution it away for the Arbok Stomper. Also, the Stomper is a great card to then eat towards a like a Elder Deep Fiend because it's already got its value for the five life and then an Elder Deep Fiend or something like that can then be emerged in. So emerged decks will want this. Any sort of uh, ramp or control based shell I think we'll definitely want the Stomper and mid range as well. So green green mid range is definitely a thing. This guy is 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 the four toughness. So there's a card that actually Chandra can kill, but it and still got, died a grass of darkness. Languish is out of the format though, and I, yeah, I think this is a solid solid card. Armorcraft Judge enters the battlefield. You draw a card for each creature where you control with plus one, plus one counter. So plus plus one counters again are going to be a theme. We've had multiple sets in a row that have plus one, plus one counters. Uh, unfortunately, Matagorger Hydra, Hydra and Avatar of... Oh, man. Av the, av the green Avatar out of the format. Too bad. I think they would have synergized great with this type of card. Uh, it is a 3-3 three, three for three. And Hangerback Walker, too. There's another one out. Uh, but it's it, even if one creature has a plus one counter, that's pretty good. Draw a card for a, and have a 3-3 three, three body. Excellent, excellent limited type strategy. Could see standard play? Absolutely. I think it's right on power level par for that sort of thing. Uh, Tireless Tracker synergizes decently with Tireless Tracker. Because Tireless Tracker gets a plus one plus one counter. And you'd still have to sack a clue first, though. But what else has plus one counters in that deck? I'm not thinking there's many others, though. Morbid Curiosity, 3 mana is additional cost to cast it, sacrifice an artifact or creature, draw cards equal to the converted mana cost of this sacrifice permanent. So it's the altar, uh, kind of like a bigger altar. So there is a lot of artifacts that want to die and creature. So, so now there's creatures and artifacts. And instead of just drawing two cards, you draw cards equal to the converted mana cost. The last time there was a card like this, it did see play uh, with the... There, there was a, a card back in Innistrad in Avacyn Restored, I believe, but you did, I think you gained life as well. But three mana, I think this is a, pretty easy to cast if you're then sacrificing uh, 
even like something has already got value out of it. There's a perfect one. You, you sacrifice the Arbor Back Stomper and draw five, five cards. So just the, the, the converted mana cost gets really interesting with this just because there's ways emerge cards you can cheat into play. Draw eight cards off an Elder Deep Fiend. Uh, don't mind if I do. I mean, I think that it probably wanted to be instant because it's hard to you to in, in response to trying to remove it. That's where you usually use cards like this. So I'm I'm not sure that not having another additional either gaining life or or something like that is gonna keep this from seeing play. But it definitely is a, a really good card draw engine, especially being able to do the artifact. That's what kind of sets it aside from. Uh, previous cards that only did creature or you know say land and the converted mana cost is probably easier than power or toughness it's a little more uh fluid little uh, there's a lot more options i think with converted mana cost uh for two fortuitous fine three mana choose one or both return artifact card from your hand your graveyard hand or return a creature not bad we've seen these type of cards see play before um when it, every have double options you can, it's basically like a, a, a three mana draw two two cards and a standard probably not going to get there because it's still competing with a, a lot of other draw slots but in limited this is definitely going to be a nice little like 18 through 23rd pick when you just need something and you have like a, a maybe a sacrifice type deck and you have an artifact deck this is just pure gas pure value all right here's when we have to get the the text for the garaper guide Three mana for a three-two, and target creature control can't be blocked. This is just a limited card, not quite good enough for standard. Um, here we have another card here with the Cataclysm Gear Hulk. It is the fixed? Okay, so this is just the. I'm trying to think of the sorcery that does this in standard. Same mana cost. So when it enters the battlefield, each player chooses from among them the non-land permanents he or she controls, an artifact, creature, enchantment, and planeswalker, then sacks the rest. Why can't I think of Tragic Arrogance? Huge distinction though, they get to choose. So this is not nearly as good as Tragic Arrogance because they get to pick their best card. You don't get to leave them with a token. And basically that's that what usually what was happening with the Tragic Arrogance is is the you know, you leave them against like green white tokens, so you leave them with a, a a plant token and kill everything else. So uh, but this does leave you back a 4-5 body, but you have to choose that for your creature. So I'm not quite sure how well this will be, if it's just worse or better than Tragic Arrogance. Again, keep this in mind. It's not how the, the, the one-sided blowout that Tragic Arrogance a lot of times was, because you are not choosing for your player. Each player chooses from among the non land parents he or she controls. The other one was you chose. So there you go. We'll get around Hexproof. Uh, it won't get around Emrakul, though, because they'll be able to choose their Emrakul. All right, so let's go down the list. We have the Demol Demolition Stomper, which is can be blocked with Cruiser's Power 2 or less. Crew 5, 6 mana, 10, 7. Not terrible. Good little limited card. A way to upgrade some of your dead creatures at that point. I like this in type like a red shell. Especially there's the 5 mana, 5, 2, the Rumble or the, the Cobble Hulk reprint. Uh, so this is a it, it, if it can get in for five two for four mana and then if they put out a blocker then you can just start crewing this and then they can't chump block it with like power two or less cards so I think this is a very solid limited card. Tinker Mastercraft two and a white for a dwarf artificer servo and doctor creatures get plus one plus one and for four mana you can create a servo artifact probably not good enough for standard but really really cool almost like a helio type ability as these will actually be two twos for four mana so actually actually this might be standard playable just because this can just breed out of control if you give it time and it actually is on curve too with its activation its activation is a little bit tough but you can go turn number th uh three drop out this guy is a three two turn number four you don't have a better play drop out a two two um servo artifact creature token and Again, every four mana that you have open, you can just continue to get uh, some value. So not a bad card whatsoever. I, it's right on the verge of standard player or not. I think that we got to... Where do we get to? We got to down here in my last spoiler video. So let's go with the Inventor's Goggles. This is a equipped creature gets plus one, plus two for one. Equip two. Whenever it enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach... So whenever an Artificer enters the battlefield, you may attach it. So there is a lot of artificers in the, the realm of Magic the Gathering, and then there was one right here. Not a bad little thing to kind of pump up 
Uh, this is now 3-2. It would be a 4-4, four, four, for example. A good little filler card. Again, not going to be... I don't think it's going to be standard playable, but a good little limited strategy. Essence Extraction, Instant Speed, deals 3 damage to our creature, and you gain 3 life. This will absolutely see play. This is a really, really good removal spell. Another card that gets Gisela. <laughs> that card is so bad. Uh, it's going to be able to kill, get Reflector Mages, and also is going to get uh, the Spell Queller, which is a 2-3. So this card's insanely good. I absolutely love this, especially with Grass of Darkness. You now have a good 2 and 3 drop slot. You still have Murders too, so very versatile removal spells. And the 3 life is very, very relevant in a format of humans. This is going to keep humans down. I think that the days of humans being a viable deck are probably behind them. I think they're getting, a lot, they're getting excited because Languish is out of the format, but I think there's still too many ways to deal with them, especially from black, and, and black, white, red, uh, green, slab, and silver, and advocate to outclass them. Uh, Ceremonious Rejection. This is an anti-Eldrazi card, counter target, colorless spell. It also is going to hit other artifacts and, and crew type cards uh, or vehicles. The Rejection will also be decent versus like Affinity and, and Bant Eldrazi, so it could see some uh, modern sideboard cards. Not a bad card whatsoever. Aerial Responder. Oh, Tron. Tron. This card's good versus Tron as well. So this is a pretty sweet little modern card. Uh, Aerial Responder. Flying Vigilance Lifelink for three mana. Very similar, almost on power level with the Flying Death Touch Lifelink card. I think that this is more of a limited card, though, because I don't think it's quite going to be there for uh, standard. As this is really competing with Spell Queller and Reflector Mage slot. It's also, I mean, in mono, it's not a human, so it can't really go into humans. I think humans wouldn't have wanted it anyway. There's more powerful three drops for them. Uh, but a deck that does want some lifelink to get in there and, and, and hold back as a blocker, yeah, I think it'd need to be a little bit more powerful to see standard play. There's just too much things that kill three toughness cards. Uh, Incendiary Flow, Essence Extraction right there, Grass of Darkness still does it. Ultimate Price is out of the format. Um, the the Exile spell for power three or less. Tons and tons of cards. Oval Chase Daredevil. Here's probably one of the cards I'm most excited about. Is a four mana for a 4-2. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you may return it from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, just think about the cards like Call to the Bloodline and discarding it. So other things too, like Collective Brutality gives you a card to discard. You're going to get this back for any artifact entering the battlefield. That is a clue. So it's cards like Tireless Tracker can get this back. If you have a self-mill strategy uh, with Tireless Tracker or Grim Harris specs in your deck, this is something that can easily just be discarded and come back. And you're going to get the, the Delirium effects if you want it in your graveyard, then have the ability to return it. It just keeps recurring, a 4-2 that keeps returning. Uh, it's so good with clues. Let me just really, really beat that home. It is really good with clues. And there's tons of artifacts in this type of set. It'll definitely see standard play. I'm sure there's ways to even abuse it in modern. Is there anything that really wants to discard to create clues or if any creature... Because Call of the Bloodline seems really good with this. Or... I'm, there's got to be some way to abuse this, where you discard a card to get a 1-1 Thopter or get an artifact somewhere. There, In the whole spectrum of Magic the Gathering, there's got to be a discard something for an artifact, and then an artifact comes into play and you get it back and rinse and repeat. There's, there, I guarantee you that someone's going to find a busted-ass combo for this Oval Chase Daredevil. If not, it's just still good with Collective Brutality and Tireless Tracker decks. Now, on to the last little spoilers, which I'm very disappointed about, just because I've, I've kind of have this, like, infatuation with Eldrazi, especially Eldrazi that are called Reality Smashers and Matter Reshapers. Those are two of my favorite cards right now in Standard. And without the Painlands, I don't think they're going to be viable. So let's just take a moment of silence now for rest uh, for the Matter Reshaper, Thought Not Seer, and Reality Smasher. My, just too hard to hit on Curve. Moment of silence over. Well, these are the fast lands. If you ever played during Scars of Mirrodin, they're insanely powerful uh, because they usually do want to. Uh, they do come into play untapped on the turns you want lands to come into play untapped. Your first, second, and third turn. So we have the enemy colored fast lands that are also going to help out modern. Um, the blue red decks definitely want this white blue decks as well. I think a white blue planeswalker deck is now viable with inspiring vantage. It's a perfect card for that deck as 
as you can get out the Nahiri on time. Um, you can put this into play first, second, or third, and then the other lands are going to come in play. What I don't like about these in standard is they're huge non-bows with the other two lands, the Battle for Zendikar lands and the Oath of the Gatewatch lands, as they neither deal with mountains or plains, nor are mountains or mountains or plains themselves. So they're going to really, they're not basic lands either. So if you want to use the Battle for Zendikar lands, you're still going to have to find basic lands, which means they're probably not going to come out on time. Uh, if, you, if you play this later than turn three, of course, they're going to come into play tapped. If you have the Shadows uh, lands, you're not going to be able to reveal them to get the Shadows land come, come into play untapped. It's just going to be kind of a messy format for fixing on time, which I'm okay with because that's the way that we can keep these multicolor decks kind of in check, especially how aggressive that red looks through either spells through Fevered Visions or through just plain aggro through the basic just red deck wins. Mono White Humans still exist. Green aggro still exists. Um, black green um, delirium that can kind of switch gears into aggro still exists so all these decks that are trying to be really clunky three colored with all these has the option of coming into play untapped but probably won't i don't think you're going to see a lot of play um or are yeah they're just gonna be too too tough so i think we didn't have the panharmonicon if it if an artifact creature enters the battlefield it causes a triggered ability of a permanent control trigger it triggers additional type a time that's insane gain 10 life off of that uh uh, want to be Thrag Tusk, anyone? Standard playable, absolutely. Modern playable, probably. Commander playable, uh, Commander decks are going to love this card. Garriper Orrery. Each player may play an additional land on each of his returns. The beginning of each player's upkeep. If the player has no cards in hand, that player draws three cards. I hate these type of cards in standard or one versus one format because it actually accelerates your opponent more than it accelerates you because you have to play a card for both of you to benefit from the same thing. So not a fan of it. Again, another little commander kitchen type card. And that's that. Did we get to the Demons of the Dark schemes? Again, I can't remember if this is where we got, but this is enters the battlefield. All other creatures get negative two, negative two. And whatever other creature dies, you get an energy. And you can pay for energy and three mana to put target creature card from your graveyard on the battlefield tap. I think we did get to this uh, in my last spoiler video. I think actually we got to Die Young is where we got to. This card's kind of cool. It reanimates things later on. It's just pure value. Uh, late game. Is it going to be standard playable? Probably not. It's five, it doesn't get immediate value. Uh, besides the negative two, negative two. At that point, though, what does it really kill? It doesn't kill Sylvanavicus, doesn't kill Reflector Mages, doesn't kill basically anything that's out. Kills Kalatos tokens, that's about it. Or humans. Doesn't kill Thermo uh, Alchemist or the, yeah. So that's my kind of my, my problem with this. It is a 5-5 five, five for 5, but the 3 black man is really, really rough. Um... Once it does start to get that energy, it is just, again, pure gas. Can get bring back a lot of, of your good cards like Sylvan Advocates that may have died. Grim Harris specs that have died. Uh, anything you've self-milled in that Delirium type strategy. So, yeah, I guess it could see play. I just don't see it happening. The Territorial Gorger, whenever you get one or more energy counters, it gets plus two, plus two in, until in a turn. Nice little filler card in. This, is it going to be good enough, though, for... Constructed. I know there's things that do add a, a ton of energies. I mean, right here's a little combo with creature dying and then energy coming in, and then this guy gets plus two plus two, and then can just swing in for lethal. But it's kind of awkward in the rare slot, kind of just like a, a filler rare. Live fast. You draw two cards, you lose two life, and get two energy. So it's a read the bones, uh, basically replacement type card. We still do have read the bones. No, no, it did. It did uh, rotate. So we do have a, a card, I believe, out of Eldritch Moon that did similar instant speed. Read the bones. But this does add that energy. This is going to be a great card in Limited. You're going to pick this up very, very quickly, especially an energy-based deck. And it is going to give you that card advantage. I think we did get to Die Young, which I thought was a pretty good card. You can pay any amount of energy to give a creature negative 1, negative 1 for each energy, and it adds that 2 mana. So very, very good card in the Limited because it's not going to be... It, it's, a, it's a removal spell that you can just cast if you need to kind of use it for ramp. So, so far, energy looks sweet. We're up to 45 minutes with this, so I think we covered everything. I know these are kind of long-winded, but I think all of these cards do deserve to be explained in their fullest. So, I'm not going to break up videos in two portions. I mean, just pause and come back again to the video if, if, if you're... I mean, YouTube does a great job at pausing and coming back if you do leave the video. So, hope you enjoyed these spoiler videos. I hope that I'm really in-depth with the cards. 
Uh, concerns, questions, complaints, yeah, in the comment section below if I can do this in a, a, a bit different way. No schnazzy editing on these. I just edit, I just kind of tape and go. I hope that's okay with everyone on YouTube. Um, everyone's just here to hear my opinion anyway. I don't think they're here for any special effects or whatnot. I appreciate all this support lately. The channel is growing finely. Our Twitter is growing good. Be sure to check out our Rogue Master Brewer. It's, 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 uh, basically we're starting to... Uh, crown the Rogue Master Brewer for the Eldritch Moon, and we'll we'll move on to Kaladesh when Kaladesh is legal. So be looking forward to that. This has been Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.